turmoil. Don't forget the Michigan primary tomorrow. Could be Bernie's last stand. Joe Biden has picked up endorsement from Kamala Harris and Cory Booker. He's got the momentum. Within 36 hours, we'll know a great deal more about November's election. On the show today, joining me right now, in fact, Elizabeth McDonald, host of Evening Edit, Andy Posda, former CKE restaurant CEO. And I want, Andy, I want to start with you. Are we strong enough to withstand the shock that we know is coming without going into recession? Uh, yes, we are. And as a matter of fact, if you look at GDP now, the Atlanta Fed's pro uh, model that projects GDP, what it's going to be by quarter, it was updated Friday and it came in at 3.1%. Well, there's only three weeks left in Q1, so I think we're going to have a stronger Q1 than people uh, believe, and I think we, we will overcome this. Look, this is not like 2008 where we had this financial bubble that burst that we had to overcome. This is something that when we have a vaccine, it'll be better. Maybe during warmer weather, it'll be better. We're just seeing a, 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 an overreaction in the market. Um, and I, I, as I said, I think we'll overcome this. Okay, stay there, Andy. You say it's an overreaction in the market. Liz is with me. Liz McDonald, uh, do you think that maybe we're setting up a monumental buying opportunity? Yeah, uh, so the adage is, is when, you know, the markets take the escalators up but the elevators down, you know, I'll be standing at the ground floor when those doors open to say, bring me, give me, give me your now cheaply valued stocks. I'll take them off your hands. The thing is, you have to be right twice, know when to get in and when Come back in again, please. We don't know, do we? We don't know the impact on the economy of this social distancing because we don't know how much social distancing America's going to go through. Right, Andy? No, we really don't have any idea. And, it, it, and we really don't know how the balance is going to go. I mean, we can see, you know, some industries, some companies are going to be hurt by this. Some are going to be helped. We, we're, we look at, we're really just going to have to wait for time to go by before we know what the impact will be on the economy. We do know that it's not going to be as bad as it was four or five years ago because even if people uh, are social distancing, now you can order anything uh, you want on Amazon, so that's going to help Amazon, but it'll help companies that sell through Amazon. If you want food, you can order on Uber Eats or DoorDash, so restaurant companies that are prominent on those, on Uber Eats and DoorDash, for example, or Grubhub, uh, will, may see their business go up. So there's a lot going on here. This is a, a big change, but I think the way we've We've changed the way we purchase things over the last four or five years. We're doing more of it without any social contact or with very minimal social contact. And companies that have bought into that may even be helped. Okay. This is going to sound like science fiction, but to your point. Can you think of any other positives here? Well, I think, I think you can build on that. You know, you've got stocks like, for example, Fidelity National Financial, which is a stock I cover. It's a title insurance stock. And it's got right now the yield, the, the dividend yields, up over 3% which is certainly better than, in, than investing in bonds. And you know, with interest rates coming down, that their business is going to soar when people go through and do all these refis. So you've got companies like that where these positives that you mentioned can really impact value, and people should take a look at those stocks. You've also got these low interest rates for the government. Remember, you know, a week ago or two weeks ago, one of the big issues was the deficit. The deficit keeps growing and growing. Well, at these interest rates, the government should refinance all the debt it has. They should sell every bond they can possibly sell and borrow at these interest rates because that'll help keep the loan debt down. Yeah, fair point. I see that. Christina, at the exchange, what do you have? You think it's a good thing if we brought the federal funds rate, I mean, the extremely short-term interest rates down to zero? Is that good? Uh, you know, I agree with Art. I think sometimes there are, there are positive aspects to lower interest rates and there are negative aspects to lower interest rates. When they lowered it, Half a percent last week, the market reacted adversely. It did not react positively. So, I, you know, I, I think the less the government does, and I, can, I consider the Fed part of the government, but the less the government does, uh, the better off we're going to be. We'll, we'll come out of this. The, the underlying economy is strong. We need to get past this coronavirus uh, overreaction. We need to see oil prices stabilize. I think what Saudi Arabia is doing is completely irresponsible, particularly when you look at the global community. We need to let these things pass. And I think the market will come back and American companies will be fine. So I'm not, okay. I'm not a big advocate of huge, huge interest rate cuts. And one of the things that we're looking for is some kind of action from the administration.